As we've noted, the Hebrew word for tabernacle is mishkan, meaning a dwelling place where God could be at home. Let's think a little about the tabernacle's layout. Imagine we have a drone's view of the plain at the base of Mount Sinai. Two and a half or three million people are camped out below. But nothing's awry. There is amazing precision everywhere. God had explained to Moses, quote, every one of the children of Israel shall camp by his own standard beside the emblems of his father's house, Numbers 2, verse 2. Thus, three banners each could be seen fluttering in the breeze on the east, south, west, and north, comprising all 12 tribes. Then, closer to the center of the camp and surrounding a high linen fence was the tribe of Levi. There were four branches of the family, with one encamped on each of the four quadrants. Aaron, the high priest, and his sons guarded the main gate into the sanctuary, which was always to face the sunrise. It was to be a new day every day for Israel, as it also is for us. When you first approached by foot, you would see a high white linen fence, tall enough that you couldn't peek over, surrounding the court. To gain access, you must go through only one gate. It also was linen, but had been beautifully decorated with woven threads of blue, purple, and scarlet. How inviting! It was closed, but unlocked, and each individual must choose to enter. If so, in the court you would see the tabernacle proper. Protected by a weatherproof leather covering, it would almost appear to be camouflaged to look like any of the other sand dunes in the desert. But for those privileged to enter, it was breathtakingly exquisite. It was 30 cubit, that's 45 feet long, 10 cubits, 15 feet wide, and 10 cubits, 15 feet high. A line between the court's gate and the tabernacle's door were two pieces of holy furniture. There was a great bronze or copper altar where priests could be seen attending to the many sacrifices. Also, just outside the tabernacle door was what appeared to be a large ornate bowl. Called the laver, it contained water for the priests to rinse their hands and feet. Only priests were allowed to enter the tabernacle. But if you could, you would see it was subdivided into two rooms by a tapestry wall, again with weavings of blue, purple, and scarlet. But this was also adorned with angelic beings, cherubim, perhaps a reminder of the ones who barred the way to Eden and reminded Israel that the reason for the barrier was humanity's sin. This area, 10 by 20 cubits, was two-thirds of the whole tabernacle and was called the holy place. Daily priestly functions were carried on here, observed only by God. On the other side of the tapestry, called the veil, was the most sacred part, called the most holy place, or literally, the holiness of holinesses. Being 10 by 10 cubits square, it housed only the Ark of the Covenant with its golden lid, the mercy seat. Again, cherubim could be seen beaten out of gold and overshadowing the mercy seat. They were the guardians of God's holiness. Here was God's throne on earth, and over it hovered his glory, manifested as a pillar of cloud by day and a fire-like pillar by night. Into this room, sometimes called the holiest of all, only the high priest could enter, and only on a certain day of the year, and only in a carefully prescribed way. We stand in awe, for we are now at the epicenter of all power, wisdom, love, righteousness, and grace on planet Earth. We are in God's home.